following on the heels of Delta Emulator, we now have the beloved Scum VM officially releasing on the Apple App Store. And if you're unfamiliar with Scum VM, this is actually not an emulator, but an app that allows you to run a bunch of classic point-and-click graphical adventure games, including those from LucasArts and Sierra Online. Some of those games include gems like the Monkey Island series, and in this video, we will be exploring this new addition to the Apple App Store and go through the install and setup process, talk about adding games, and hopefully along the way learn about a few gems that make Scum VM something worthwhile to add to your Apple devices. Please join me, Rob the Retro Tech Dad, as we delve into the world of old school graphical adventure games, but now playable on your Tasty Fruit device. So first things first, let's get ScumVM going on your Apple devices. I've made things nice and easy and have included a link direct to the Apple App Store down in the description. However, you can also head on over to the App Store on your Apple device of choice and simply type in ScumVM into the search box and it should be one of the first results that come back. Now as I briefly mentioned at the start of this video, ScumVM provides a way to play many classic graphical point and click adventure games and RPGs. So let's go ahead and click install and get this on our device. Once done, simply click open and it should look a bit like this with nothing obviously populated here. So let's just get a little bit familiar with the interface here and I'll quickly go through the available options, but this won't be in depth as it generally you will want to leave things alone here since a lot of the games just work great out of the box. I will cover how to add games as well as setting up cloud storage in just a little bit. So one of the first things we should take a look at are the global options, which does impact every game that you have added to Scum VM. We have a multitude of tabs here, and there's definitely quite a bit that can be adjusted. In the graphics tab, which will be the first thing that you see, we generally will leave things at default. Some of the more noteworthy adjustments are things like the render mode, which allows us to reproduce what the game looked like on a specific computer. The stretch mode option is another that I leave at default, but you can see that we do have a few different choices, and this is just a matter of preference in terms of how you want the games to be displayed. And the same thing for scaling, which I also leave at default as well, but you can scale up the resolution here. Now in the shaders section, there are a ton of options here and all sorts of filters, and obviously we won't cover each one of these as it just goes way beyond the scope of this video. You can also download shader packs that become available by clicking on the download shaders option to the right. Another cool thing that you can do is actually test your shaders without needing to go into game. You can do this by clicking on apply after choosing a shader and you will get a pop up that displays what the shader will look like, which is a pretty cool feature. Continuing on, we have the aspect ratio correction, which when it's enabled will display the image as it would have appeared on the original display. And then a few other things which really should just be left at default. In the control section, you can adjust the speed of your pointer to your preference. The key map tab is useful for mapping shortcuts that can be used to bring up different things like the keyboard, the main menu for Scum VM, and you can either map your own or stick with the defaults that have been predefined by Scum VM. In the back end tab, there are a few adjustments that are worth knowing about here. First, you can adjust the visibility of the on screen controls here. Additionally, you can define which touch modes to use depending on where you are in Scum VM. I generally like the touchpad emulation, so I would change these options to make use of touchpad emulation. You can also leave everything here at default and then switch on the fly using the mouse icon in the top right corner. Now in the audio tab, again, things are best left at default. Scum VM will automatically choose the best audio device for the game. The volume tab is pretty self-explanatory and allows you to adjust levels for various in-game sounds. The other audio sections should also be left at default, as ScumVM will decide automatically how to handle those options. In the Paths section, you can define the locations for save files, themes, icons, and any extras that apply to the games. For the icons, you can actually provide box art for the games when you are in grid view instead of the list view, which is actually the perfect opportunity to move on to the next tab, which is the GUI tab, and here we can change the theme for ScumVM, as well as make a few changes to the interface like sizing. But most importantly, we can download icons here, which will then populate the box art for our games when we're in grid view to make everything look really nice. Let's go ahead and click on download icons and then download on this screen in the bottom left, which will then start the download process. Give this a moment to download everything and once done, we can then move over to the miscellaneous tab. Here we can define how often ScumVM does an autosave. 
Finally, we have the cloud tab, which we'll be covering the entire process of getting cloud syncs and storage set up, and then the LAN tab, which we will not be covering in this video. So let's head back to the main screen of Scum VM, and you can see that I do have some games already in this list. If you move your pointer over a game title, you can then change its game options by selecting it from the right. This will bring up the game options screen, and the changes you make here are only defined for the specific game, so this is how you would set per game configurations as needed. Back on the menu screen for Scum VM, let's go down to the bottom left and switch our view to the grid view, which we discussed a little bit earlier and we should now have icons ready to go. We'll talk about adding games in just a moment, but the games I do have pre-installed here now have art, which makes things look really nice. Now right above the game list or icons, we have the option to sort our collection of games in various ways, including by publisher, year, title, and platform. So if you have a preference on how to arrange your library, this is how you would sort it. You can also search for a specific game using the search box just to the left of the sort dropdown. While we have these icons up, it's worth noting that you can also long hold on an icon here to bring up some options, including launching the game, the game options, which we just discussed earlier, and finally loading any save files that you might have. Lastly, in the top left corner, we have a question mark, which provides some additional resources and explanations on how to get things going. So I think we're finally ready to go through the process of acquiring and adding games. The nice thing about ScumVM is that obtaining games to use with ScumVM is actually a mostly easy thing to do in 2024. You can actually purchase a lot of the games that ScumVM supports legally from well-known online stores like GOG and even Steam to supply the files that are needed to play them on your iPhone and iPad. Let's go through the process of obtaining a game from GOG first and then we will cover the process for Steam. I'll be using my Windows PC to get all of this working. Okay, so you've purchased a game from GOG and now have downloaded the files. For the GOG example, I'll be using the adventure game Loom from LucasArts, which is a fantastic game that comes highly recommended. Now over on my Windows PC, you will see that I have downloaded Loom from GOG and you should have something that looks like this, which is the GOG installer for Loom that is in the .exe format. We can't simply copy over the .exe to our iOS device. We will actually need to install the game to our PC first and then copy over the game files that are needed. This isn't too complicated of a process though. Let's run the Loom installer and then go through the setup process. I'll go ahead and just install it to my C drive as it already has defaulted to that. And that's okay since this will only be needed for a short time. With the game installed, let's head on over to the location, which for this example is the C drive and then the Loom folder. In this folder, we have a ton of files here, but we actually don't need all of these files. So how do you figure out which files are needed to copy over for Scum VM? The official website is actually a great resource for this. Let's head on over to the Scum VM wiki page, which I will have linked down in the description. On the main page, we will want to head on over to the supported games section, which will provide us with a listing of all the games that Scum VM supports. At this time, there are 496 total games supported here. Since I'm using Loom as an example, I'll head on over to the L section and then click on Loom, which will take us to the game's detailed page. Now this is where we will find out which files are required for Scum VM. If you click on installation, it will take us to that section. And for this game, we do need the .lfl files the disk01.lec and the cdda.sou file, which is needed for speech and is part of the Steam and GOG versions as noted here on the page. So back in the Loom folder, let's go ahead and select the .lfl files, which for this will be 000.lfl, 901.lfl, 902.lfl, 903.lfl, and 904.lfl, as well as the cdda.sou and disk01.lec files. Okay, so how do we get these selected files over to our iPhone or iPad? Well, the easiest way to do this is to actually just use iCloud, which is going to be the method that I'll be using here in this video as my example. You can simply sign onto your iCloud drive by going to the iCloud website using your web browser. In my iCloud drive, I have gone ahead and created a Scum VM games folder. And in this folder, I have also started to add some of my favorite LucasArts games. Since we want to add Loom, I will go ahead and create a Loom folder on my iCloud drive. Now with those seven required game files already selected, just copy them over to your Loom folder that you've created. 
you'd do this same process for any game that you'd like to add. I find it's best to create folders and then organize it that way. Once it has finished uploading, we will need to go back to our iOS device and then add the game to ScumVM. But first, we need to copy over the files to the ScumVM directory. We can do this by opening up the Files app. Navigate to your iCloud drive, and then to the location that you copied over the game files. In this example, I have it in a ScumVM games folder, and then the Loom folder which we created together in this video. Long hold on the folder you want to copy over, which is the Loom folder, select copy, and then let's navigate back to the on my iPhone or iPad folder like shown, and you will notice there is a ScumVM folder here, which was actually automatically created when you installed ScumVM. Head on over to that folder and then long hold in a blank area and select paste to copy over the Loom folder and files. Give it a moment to download from the cloud and then it will be copied over locally to your device. Okay, now we are ready to go back into ScumVM. At the bottom, click on add game and you should see that the Loom folder will appear here in the select directory with game data screen. I'll go ahead and select Loom which becomes highlighted in green and then select choose. You will be presented with another screen. I recommend leaving everything here at default to keep things nice and simple. Click on OK at the bottom of the screen. Loom should now appear in your list of games. Select it and then click on Start and you should be good to go. Congratulations, you've successfully added GOG files to ScumVM. So how do we do this with Steam game files? Well, it's pretty much a similar process. Let's head on over to Steam and I'll go ahead and use Sam and Max Hit the Road as my example game for this portion. Sam and Max Hit the Road is easily one of the best games that you can enjoy here with Scum VM, and essentially a must play that we can now enjoy on iOS devices thanks to Scum VM. So I'll go ahead and download and get this installed to my PC. I'll just go ahead and use the default Steam directory to install to since again, this is going to be a temporary thing that we're doing here so that we can extract the needed files. Once downloaded, head on over to your library and then the game installed, which for this example is going to be Sam and Max. At the right side, click on the gear icon, which will then bring down additional options. Move your mouse over to manage and then select browse local files, which will open up the directory that contains the installed Sam and Max game files. So like before, we will need to head on over to the Scum VM wiki page and consult the list of supported games to figure out which game files we need. Under the PC CD section, you can see that the required files to copy over are monster.sou, Sam and Max.000 and Sam and Max.001. No problem. Let's go back to our folder with the installed files, and we can see that we do in fact have those three required files here. And just like we did in the GOG section, I'll go ahead and copy these files over to my iCloud drive by going to the iCloud website in a browser. I already created my own Scum VM folder, which is where I've been adding and storing my games that work with Scum VM. And in this folder, you can see some of the games I've already added here, including Loom from the GOG section prior to this one. Let's go ahead and create a new folder here for Sam and Max. Again, this is just a matter of preference, but I do like organizing my games this way so they are easy to find. With those three files selected, I'll go ahead and drag and drop these into the new Sam and Max folder that I've created, and then give it a minute to upload to the iCloud drive. Once that's finished, we are now able to head back over to our device and add the game to ScumVM. Just like we did before with the GOG game, let's head on over to the Files app and then head into your iCloud drive. I have the Scum VM Games folder that I created from before, which I can head into, and we can see that the Sam and Max folder is showing up here on the iCloud drive. So let's long hold on the folder and then select Copy. Now we can go back in your locations to on my iPad or iPhone, depending on the device you're using, and you should see the Scum VM folder that is automatically created by the app. Head into this folder and then long hold on a blank area to then paste the folder that we copied from the iCloud drive. Give it a moment to download the files locally to your device. Okay, once done, we can now head back into ScumVM to add the game. Click on the add game option and you can see that Sam and Max is now in this list. I'll go ahead and select the game and then click choose to add the game. I suggest leaving everything at default since you can always change any settings later on if you need to and then click OK to add the game to Scum VM. So there's Sam and Max in the list now. And I'll go ahead and click start to test and yeah, it looks like we're good to go. Now one thing that might not seem obvious with something like Scum VM is its ability to support Bluetooth, USB-C and MFI controllers that work with Apple devices. 
The cool thing about Skelm VM is that these pretty much work right out of the box, and I've tested quite a few options with both my iPad and iPhone. You can see here I have my Red Magic Shadow Blade 2, which is a rebrand of the GameSir GA Galileo, an awesome telescopic controller that connects via USB-C. This controller has a mod that allows it to fit tablets larger than even the iPad mini I'm using here, so it's a great option for those that are wanting to use a controller with a tablet. But I have tried countless other options, including the GameSir X2S, another USB-C controller from GameSir, as well as the BSP D8 and D9, both of which are Bluetooth telescopic controllers, and so will support older devices that don't have a USB-C connection. Also, I have a useful tip if you're using a telescopic controller with something smaller like the iPad Mini 6 here. You will probably find out that the volume control, as well as the power button here, are in the way and cause issues with controllers like the GA Galileo and X2S. There's a workaround for this, and it's actually pretty easy to set up and use once configured. We can actually use a setting called Guided Access to lock out those buttons from doing anything, which is perfect for this use case. Head on into Settings and then go to Accessibility. You're going to need to scroll way down until you get to the Guided Access option under General. And then from here, just turn it on to enable it. You will be asked to set up a pin to enable and disable the feature when you're in Guided Access mode. Now back in Scum VM, you can see that when I dock my controller back in, it's causing all sorts of issues, including activating Siri. No problem though, we'll just go ahead and activate Guided Access by clicking on the power button three times when you are in Scum VM. You will get a prompt to start Guided Access, which you can do by clicking on Start in the top right corner. Enter your pin that you created for this, and then you will get a prompt that Guided Access has started. So let's put the controller back on one more time, and now we don't have any issues with the buttons being activated or used, and we can enjoy our iPad mini with this setup. Now Scum VM does support cloud storage and syncing, so let's dive a bit deeper into this and actually cover the process for getting this set up. We'll go with some direct feed footage so we can clearly see the process here. Back in Scum VM, let's head on over to the global options, and then over to the cloud tab on this new screen. If you're on an iPhone, you might need to hit the arrow on the top right corner of the screen to see the other tabs available since the Cloud tab is one of the last ones here. So of course, by default, you'll see that we don't have any active storage. In the drop-down menu, we do have a few options here. Now, Scum VM doesn't support iCloud drives for syncing. Instead, we do have a few other options here, including Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, and Box. For this example, I'll be using my Google Drive, but the process is essentially the same for the other three options. With Google Drive selected, we now have the option to connect, so let's go ahead and do that. In my own personal experience, I have found that the manual option is actually the easiest way to get this working, and so we will go ahead and use the manual mode. I have found that quick mode can be problematic, and so the goal here is to get you set up without much issue. Let's select manual mode now, and we will be taken to step one, which is to open up the Scum VM cloud link that's listed here. Click on the red area, and it will open up this website automatically in your browser right on the device. Okay, after doing that, you should now have the Scum VM page opened up with the four cloud services listed here. So for this example, I'll be using Google Drive, and as such, I'll go right ahead and click on the Google Drive logo to get this going, and then you should be redirected to the Google sign-in page. The same thing will happen regardless of which service you are using. Once you've signed in and given the necessary permissions, you will be taken back to the Scum VM page saying that something went wrong. This is actually what we want to happen as we will scroll down to the second choice and use the manual mode option by selecting the code that's in this text box here. So do a select all, make sure everything is selected properly, and then click copy. Now let's go back into Scum VM, and we can continue where we left off, which was at the step one page. Click on next at the bottom of this screen, and then paste the code we just copied into this text box here by selecting the paste option. Once that's done, hit next to continue on. And you should get this window, which says that your cloud storage has been connected. There is still just one more thing to do, so let's click finish, and now we have a very different looking cloud tab, which shows that Google Drive is the active storage. You will probably notice that it says that this storage is not yet enabled, and so this is a very important step. Click on Enable Storage, and now you should be good to go. I'll go ahead and hit Sync now just to get my saves synced up from my iPhone. You will see that after hitting Sync, we now get information like the last sync date and time, as well as how much space we're using to store this sync data. 
Let's hit OK, and then I'll go ahead and load up my absolute favorite game supported by ScumVM, which is Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. Highlighting the game and then clicking on load, you will see that I do in fact have a save file here, which actually came from my iPhone. And just like that, we are all synced up. And this is definitely a nice feature to have, and I hope that this does make things a little bit easier to get configured. Now, there are a few games that ScumVM allows us to play that actually have been brought over natively to the Apple App Store. Some of these games include standouts like Day of the Tentacle Remastered and Full Throttle Remastered. But if you remember seeing the game list from earlier in this video, there are almost 500 supported games. And most of these games are not available directly on the App Store, and so ScumVM is definitely a very welcome thing to have here on the Apple App Store officially. ScumVM opens the doors to some truly classic games like those from LucasArts, including some of the ones that I mentioned earlier in this video, like Loom and Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. Not only that, but so many of these great games are available for purchase, and so acquiring games for ScumVM is a relatively simple process. And the best part is that many of these games are very affordable or regularly on sale on both GOG and Steam. Finally, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the selection of games that are completely available to download for free as they have been made freeware by their copyright holders. The ScumVM wiki page is yet again a wonderful resource to find a listing of games that are available as freeware, and not only that, the wiki provides links to their download locations. There's some really great games in this list alone, and the two I'd definitely recommend trying would be Beneath a Steel Sky and Broken Sword 2.5. But really, there's so many games that I could recommend, and there's lots of great resources to discover some of the best in the library. I'd recommend starting out with my friend Tim's list over at Team Pandori, as the 10 games he features are definitely what I consider to be some of the best that we can enjoy on Scum VM. And so that about does it. I hope this video was helpful, and I do hope that you consider giving Scum VM a try on your Apple device and explore the great library that this brings to us. There's plenty to enjoy here for first timers, and for those looking to revisit a childhood favorite, this is a guaranteed way to make you smile again. I know that I have enjoyed relaxing with my pups, and especially Nalo who has grown quite fond of the stories that come along with these great adventure games of old. Until the next time, as always, I am the Retro Tech Dad, and thank you so much for watching.